So my name is Ursula Sobek. I'm from Funding Box, and today, together with my colleague Veronica and also with support from Anna, we'll be hosting the second webinar for Secure IT Open Call. Uh, that will be dedicated to solving the most uh, commonly asked questions and give you some tips and tricks on how to uh, submit uh, good quality uh, and winning proposal. Uh, Funding Box is part of Secure IT Consortium. Uh, and we are responsible for management of the open call and all the evaluation process. So today, uh, I would like to give you some kind of overview of the second uh, open call in security. Then we will focus on the uh, most uh, um, question that we gathered so far. And then I will give you some trips and Six trips, uh, how to prepare a winning proposal. And at the end, there will be some se session for question and answer that you might have. So um, introduction. So um, the main goal of the project is to create a new value chain for uh, secure, safe, and resilient citizen territories uh, by supporting uh, European uh, SME operating uh, in security. Uh, area and provide them uh, support and uh, finance their project. And we are focusing on supporting collaborative projects, so meaning that projects should be submitted uh, by uh, consortium, especially uh, we are looking for cross-border cooperation between SMEs. Now for this, we have uh, case case founding um, and uh, to select the best proposal, the best project, we are, are organizing two calls. So first one was um, organized last year and the second one is ongoing now. Uh, we would like to select in this open call uh, up to 21 projects and support at least 42 SMEs. So two SME at least uh, per one project. We have here two different funding instruments. One is prototyping, and you can receive up to 74,000 euro per project and uh, maximum 60,000 euro per single SME. And demonstration instrument where you can receive uh, a bit more, up to 88,000 euro per one project uh, and still maximum 60,000 euro per SME. And uh, support period will last uh, for maximum 12 months. Who we are looking for, so as I mentioned, we're looking for consortia composed of at least two SMEs. SMEs should be registered like a person, establishing one of uh, member states, European Union, overseas countries, territories, associate country to Horizon 2020, and also in, in United Kingdom. Additional requirements uh, uh, are the following. So SMEs should be at least technology or solution provider. There shouldn't be any capital or personal link between SMEs. So SMEs should be independent from each other. Of course, can have some kind of uh, past cooperation, uh, business contract and so on, but shouldn't have capital or personal link. And so we're also looking for companies with some kind of experience in a domain of a project. Uh, SME supported under first open call cannot receive uh, support under second open call. Uh, ideal type of project that we are looking for um, are um, projects that address uh, specific challenges. I will mention it uh, in a while. Uh, in two areas of cybersecurity and also digital application applying to security solution. Um, regarding the minimum requirements about TRL level, so to be eligible, your project should be uh, at minimum TRL level five. And uh, during the project, it should progress to trial six or seven in prototyping instrument and to eight or nine, so being very close to the market, uh, under demonstration instrument. Uh, if you're wondering uh, to which instrument you should apply, uh, please consider the following. So uh, it depends on the matur maturity of your solution. So if you are interested in building the prototype or minimum valuable product of your solution, then you should apply to prototyping instrument. And if you already have prototype or uh, MVP and would like to do pilot, uh, apply to demonstration uh, instrument. Mm, if you're struggling with uh, looking for a partner, um, we have some kind of tools that can support you in this process. So um, the most um, important one is a matchmaking session. Um, next one will be on 8 February. Uh, this is a session uh, that will be online. 
so under the link, um, you can also find the link on main um, security project web, web page. Uh, you can register to matchmaking um, service and create your profile, add uh, your idea for the project and request uh, for the meeting from company that already um, are um, registered on the platform or register and waiting for some kind of um, potential um, a meeting um, during the process. So we encourage you to register as soon as possible to have more option uh, and most, most more possibility to um, organize a meeting with potential partner. Uh, we have also another tool. Uh, you can look by yourself um, into our uh, catalog, uh, security solution catalog. This is a catalog that includes um, almost uh, 90 um, offers from European SME operating in security and cybersecurity. Um, so if you are interested in um, some kind of specific uh, cooperation, you can also use this catalog and try to contact by yourself company included in this catalog. Uh, coming back to the main topic, so uh, regarding the uh, security challenges, so we have them in uh, uh, three domains, the same domains as for the um, first open call, so sensitive infrastructure protection, disaster, disaster resilience, and public spaces protection major event. Uh, you can dive into uh, the details uh, visiting uh, open call web page or main uh, security project web page and look for a uh, domain when it your um, uh, project. Uh, I encourage you to do it before applying. I hope that you find uh, uh, area that is uh, close to your business and close to your uh, project solution. And now we, we are moving to the core part of this um, webinar. So um, question and answer that we received uh, so far uh, from uh, applicants. So first one, very common, can I, can I apply to the second open call if I already participated in the first open call? So uh, yes and no. Yes, if you were not selected for funding, this is, this is fine. And uh, you cannot apply uh, if you were not if you were selected and uh, you are part of security program. So if you're already uh, receiving some kind of support from the consortium, uh, this means that you are not eligible uh, to be selected for funding under the second open call. And this uh, refers uh, to consortia as a, as a whole and also to uh, single SMEs. So if consortium apply and one of SME already received uh, support from security first open call, that means that overall consortium is not eligible to uh, approach under second open call. And please keep in mind that we have here also exceptions. So if you were invited to a jury day and receive a mini grant for the jury day in the first open call, this is okay. And you can still apply uh, to the second open call and uh, be selected. The next question that we received is, uh, can I submit a proposal that address more than one challenge? And can I submit a proposal that is not related to any challenges? So um, yes, um, you can, uh, you can uh, select uh, more than one challenge. Um, we ask you to first select the challenge, but um, are the most um, important for your project. Uh, you will find the list of challenges uh, in the application form. So first you should select the domain and then you will see uh, the list of uh, detailed challenges uh, related to this uh, particular domain. And uh, then you can also provide information about other different uh, challenges and domain that you would like to address and put uh, the description and information in the uh, description box um, below the questions. Uh, how many applications can be submitted by one company? So SME can submit only one proposal and uh, there's no point to uh, submit more than one because uh, we will consider as eligible only uh, the one, the last eligible proposal which has been submitted. Um, the other proposal will not be uh, evaluated. And also, uh, please keep in mind that you can apply only to one instrument. So uh, you should first uh, select, choose between prototyping and demonstration instrument, and then try to pro propose um, the best application uh, possible. 
Next question is, can the research institute or, uh, or a large company um, can participate in open call? Yes, um, research institutions, large companies can be part of the consortium, but cannot receive funding. So this means that still um, this requirement of having at least two SME in consortium is, um, is mandatory. Uh, then you can invite to your consortium other institutions, other companies that are bigger. Um, if the input to the project is important. Uh, they can act as uh, end user, as kind of a provider for test beds. So you know, it's it's up to you. But uh, at least uh, your consortium should be composed of two SME. And remember that uh, other entities that are not SME cannot receive funding. So cannot could be part of consortium, but cannot receive money. Mm, then a uh, question about. Uh, connection between SMEs that uh, form consortium. So can two SMEs that are linked, so one SME having 51 uh, persons of shares of the other SME, can create a consortium and get funding? So no, because there is capital link between companies. And as you can see in the guide, uh, two SMEs applying as consortium should be independent uh, from each other. How can I get extra score for international cooperation? What are the requirements for this? So uh, you can get extra point if you are, um, your consortium is composed of companies from different countries um, after extra evaluation stage. So example, one company is from France and one is from Italy. This is, this is good, you can receive one extra score. If, for example, one company is from Spain and two companies, uh, in the case of uh, consortium composed of three companies are from Italy, this is still okay. But in case of uh, there's two SME from Italy and one big company from Poland, there is no okay because there is no two SME from the different country. So SME are from the same from the same country in this case, and large companies from other countries. So this is uh, set up but not give you extra point. And other example, uh, two SMEs from the same country, but different region, this means that you will not um, receive extra score there. Um, apart from this, we'll also give a scores for uh, consortium composition during pre-scoring stage. So uh, this time in pre-scoring, we'll score uh, overall consortium. So your consortium composition taking into account also uh, large entities or other um, institutions like RTOs or universities from other countries. So this means that having partners uh, from different region countries are also uh, valuable, even this is not SME. How we can use the grant that will be received? So we receive a lot of questions about uh, how the grant will be spent, what are the rules for the money that we are distributing. So um, here, as for other um, Horizon 2020 project, applies uh, basic rules for FSTP. FSTP means financial support to third parties. So uh, costs are eligible as long as they correspond to the execution of a project. So the costs must be connected with the action uh, and goals of your project that you are submitting and would like to develop under um, security project. Costs must occur during the uh, support program duration. So within the 12 months, when you will have time to develop your project, starting from uh, signature of subgrant agreement. And uh, we will ask you to provide a cost breakdown in forms of a budget uh, to be included in the follow-up plan. Mm -hmm. Follow-up plan is a document that will be drafted at the beginning of support program. What you include all the main information about your project, plan for the implementation, and also the cost that you would like to spend. Um, in the application form, we also we will also ask you to provide some very general breakdown of the cost between um, consortium partners indicating how much you would like to also spend for travels to the kick of meeting and uh, how much cost how much cost will be spent by each of consortium member uh, what can be covered by the cost so we have uh, several categories the same as applying to other uh, horizon 2020 projects so first personal costs so cost of involvement people employees uh, in the project execution. So your uh, IT staff, for example, developers or your researchers or uh, management team as well. Uh, then purchasing of goods, 
and services that uh, are necessary for the project development. So it could be infrastructure, it could be some kind of services that you really need uh, to develop your project or some other costs. We also include here uh, travel costs. Remember that uh, in this case, at the beginning of uh, support period, we will organize um, kickoff meeting in person. It will be in Vilnius. So please uh, keep in mind that you should reserve some part of budget to cover the travel and accommodation cost for kickoff meeting. And there's also a possibility to subcontract some kind of uh, some part of task. Um, in the security, we decided that um, maximum amount that can be spent on some contracting is 30% of the uh, total grant. And also here, um, you can dedicate some part of a budget for overhead. So up to 25% 25, 25 of the budget can be spent on covering the costs that uh, are necessary to carry out the action, but not very uh, stipulate related to uh, to the execution of the project, like, for example, uh, office rental or something like this. And uh, also at this point, I would like to mention uh, the payments, how we are going to pay you, what are the rules and uh, payment process. So um, you will receive um, money uh, in two installments. So first one, 20% at the beginning of the program after um, validation of your follow-up plan and then uh, the rest 80 percent will be uh, spent will be paid to you once you deliver uh, the final results so we will review uh, your achievement and if everything will be in line with what was promised in the application stage then uh, you will receive the second part of the grant in the middle of the support program, we will have interim review uh, meeting to check your progress. This meeting, this, this stage is not related to any payment, but at this, at this time, we will check how you are going, um, if you have any problem, maybe if some risk uh, occur to uh, take some action and enable you to finalize the project um, without delay and without uh, without problems, so will be some kind of conformal meeting uh, in the middle of the program. And the payments process, uh, you can see how it looks like here. So um, of course, I want depends on the type of uh, instrument. So for prototyping and for demonstration, they are different. Uh, and still um, during the month one, at the end of this, this period, uh, you will receive up to 20% of the grant in form of prepayment and the last 80% will be paid uh, at month 12 after a review of your project results. You will find also the table and the details in frequently asked question documents on the open call webpage if you would like to uh, investigate it more. Uh, next, the uh, commonly asked question is can I attach additional documents to the application, like letter of support? Uh, and here we make a change uh, in respect to the first open call, and we give you possibility to upload some additional documents. And um, moving forward, uh, some of the documents are optional and some uh, will be mandatory. So we accept uh, three types of documents. Uh, let's say attachment. So first letter of support, letter of intent. If you have some letter of support from potential end users or from the organization that you would like to do demonstration with, uh, we encourage you to upload a letter of support. Uh, and this is optional, but of course, um, increase your chances to be selected because proof that uh, you have uh, everything in place and you are ready to do the project. And then you have two other attachments that are mandatory. So first one is healthy finance check uh, documents. So um, we ask you to perform a healthy finance check using European Commission tool and upload the results to um, our application form. Remember that this is mandatory uh, for uh, completing the eligibility check. So um, remember that this must be done for each uh, member of your consortium each SME um, in the consortium. And then we also request you to upload your logo. Um, uh, and this is also um, mandatory. So in the application form, you will find, as it shows now, you will find a section and a button upload, enable you to apply to upload documents in the format PDF uh, or others uh, that you 
find um, convenient for you. And uh, you may now uh, think about what is healthy finance check. So let me um, explain you this is, a, this is a way to check if you are in a good condition, good commercial con condition and can receive support from European uh, Union through open call. So um, European Commission developed a tool. This is a kind of questionnaire that is available under the link displayed here. You will find also link in the application form and also in the guide for applicants and recruitment of plans, you will find example and the instruction how to perform this, uh, this check. And important note, so um, all SME consortium must do this check and upload confirmation. And it's a mandatory requirement for eligibility check. So if you fail to do this, if you forget to do this, uh, or if you attach different documents than this, uh, you will be excluded, uh, rejected during the uh, eligibility uh, check after the open call deadline. And uh, please also keep in mind that uh, uh, the web page do not uh, give possibility to um, download uh, the results uh, in the form of PDF, for example. So we advise you to do, for example, a, a screenshot or um, print uh, the web page uh, to PDF. And uh, this way, uh, you can upload the resource. What we need from you is to have this uh, table uh, attached uh, to our application form. No more, just this uh, final uh, table at the end of, of the um, questionnaire. What type of project will be prioritized during the pre-scoring? So pre-scoring is uh, also very important uh, as it shows uh, um, as occurred during the first open call. Um, so this time we try to put more attention to highlight in the application form all the questions that are related to um, pre-scoring criteria. So in the application form, uh, you will find a question with a list of um, answers and they are marked uh, by adding note that this is pre-scoring question. So once uh, filling out, please remember um, but this uh, this is matter, and that uh, your answer uh, is related to to criterion, criterion um, in press scoring um, stage. So, to check the press scoring criteria, uh, please uh, go to guide for applicants. You will find the list of press scoring criteria with maximum uh, point that you can uh, get. And here is the list of. Um, uh, priorities for us uh, in this press scoring. So uh, we would like to press select or prioritize the projects that follow the design principles um, submitted by consortia that have the background experience in research and the business. Uh, so with a little more focus on research side than on business side. Uh, partners should have experience in the target market and of course solution has uh, potential to be scaled and then enter new market in terms of country as well. Um, solution uh, should uh, be scaled so the number of potential uh, end user uh, should be high as possible. Um, we also appreciate uh, the project um, that involve end user in the development or validation stage. Uh, also, we are looking for projects um, that uh, are high, highly innovative compared to other solutions uh, existing on the market. Uh, and uh, we are looking for a um, consortia uh, composed of partners from different countries already. And it would be nice if a company could have some kind of uh, cooperation in the past. It, it for sure make uh, they work under security much easier. And also in terms of um, experience with EU funding, we are looking for project, we have to prioritize the project, something by partner that do not have benefited uh, from EU uh, funding recently. So newcomers uh, in this environment, in this ecosystem uh, are uh, more than welcome. Uh, next uh, question that we receive, uh, do I need to travel during the selection process? For example, for jury day uh, or support program. So, at um, this time, we adjust the process following the um, feedback from 
beneficiaries and applicants. So there is no more need to travel for the jury day. So from your side, jury day will be uh, held online. So you will just need to connect for 15 minutes to give a pitch and answer the question from, from jurors. And instead of this, uh, there, was a, there was a huge need from beneficiaries to organize some kind of kickoff uh, in form of physical meetings. So this time we will organize a kickoff in Vilnius at the beginning of support program. Uh, we already have a date, so it will be on 10 and 11 of July. So please book your uh, time for this event in advance. And also please uh, reserve a part of the grant to cover the cost of travel to the two day meeting, to the kickoff meeting, sorry. And uh, now I would like to give you some uh, advice on how to prepare a winning proposal. So before applying, we advise you to check a few things that could be crucial for success of your proposal. So please check if you're applying uh, as a consortium composed of at least two SMEs from eligible countries and at least one consortium member should be IT or technology providers. So for example, no room for a proposal submitted by uh, to uh, consultancy agency, for example, or market marketing agency. So no place for such proposal. Uh, check if you're addressing at least one of uh, security challenge and choose the right instrument. And remember that your solution should be at least at tier level five. Um, last time we had some kind of rejection because tier level was lower, like three or four. So please pay attention to this. Um, requirement. Of course, make sure that you submit only one proposal and your proposal has the European dimension and you are you have a focus on civil application. Uh, it means that we would like to support application with uh, civil use only. So um, in security, we don't want to support application that have military or dual uh, use. Mm -hmm. Of also, uh, make sure that uh, your IPR rights are uh, in place. So, if check if you have a li right license, if you, if um, for example, license or things that you would like to do in a project uh, are free to use, and always um, things around uh, this uh, issue. Uh, check if you haven't received uh, financial support uh, from security. Uh, first, open call check also uh, the status of your consortium partners. So, because it may happen at the end that uh, you cannot receive funding because uh, your partner already received support or is part of a uh, security support program. Uh, check if your proposal is prepared in English and all mandatory sections are uh, filled in. And uh, also check your financial situation and check if you are not in a liquidation of of course, the same um, apply to your consortium partner. Uh, and for this, um, filling the healthy finance check uh, documents uh, will be very helpful. And so you will spot at the very beginning if you can apply or maybe it's uh, no point because you have in a, a difficult uh, situation. And uh, you or your consortium member should have also any conflict of interest with security consortium partners. So please also pay attention to this situation. This is uh, really important uh, uh, to be successful. Uh, also, we uh, encourage you to check our other documents, so guide for applicants, where we explain the process, and also frequently asked questions where we gather um, close to 50 questions and answers related to different aspects of the application process. Some, we also include there some kind of tips and tricks that you can use during the process. Uh, and uh, let me also remind you about uh, criteria. So we have a different group of criteria related to different state of evaluation process. So eligibility criteria uh, at the very beginning. So this is a criteria that I mentioned um, before. Then we have press scoring criteria if we receive more than 80 proposal, um, that is uh, quite possible. And then we will apply uh, press scoring and uh, we will do some kind of press selection based on new press scoring um, criteria for the second open call. So uh, we redefine the criteria compared to the first open call and uh, we hope this, that uh, they will fit uh, quite good to the project that we are uh, looking for. 
And uh, then uh, check also a uh, criteria that will be scored by external evaluators that are divided in three groups, excellent impact and implementation. And here there will be also one extra score for international consortia. Uh, please note that- uh, Yeah, during... I did, yeah, Christy, yeah. Please uh, also note that during the first uh, open call, uh, we selected uh, for funding um, proposal that most of them uh, were uh, submitted by consortia composed of at least two SME from different countries. So this was very important uh, to be selected. So please pay attention to this aspect and try to find your country, your partner from another country. And we also have transversal criteria such as uh, contribution to low carbon economy, equal equal opportunities, gender balance, social impact, that will be considered uh, during the whole process and also especially for the uh, jury day. Um, when uh, filling out the proposal, make sure that you address um, this uh, criteria um, and they're reflected in the application form. We have uh, questions that are named Section that are named the same as criteria. So once filling them, please note that this will impact your scores in different area. And final tip: so invest your time to prepare a good proposal, a good application. Uh, in this, in this case, when consortia are involved, uh, it uh, more time consuming best to get together with your consortium, agree on the common approach, and then prepare uh, the application. Remember about European dimension. So this means that your project should benefit not only to you, but should also bring some kind of value for European Union, society and economy. Uh, remember about innovation. So this is very important. Your project should be outstanding and should have some kind of innovation uh, aspects uh, highlighted. Uh, follow the criteria and try to provide evidence and numbers. Uh, as you will see in the application form, um, you, we not only ask for declare something, but we also ask you to uh, prove um, your declaration, provide evidence or provide more explanation uh, to the different uh, criteria and different aspects. Uh, remember uh, to have a good team and that will be able to um, conduct a project. Um, team should be balanced uh, with uh, skills necessary to uh, manage uh, project wisely and also to do necessary development or other, uh, other tasks related to your uh, solution. And try to be convincing for evaluators or try to provide as many uh, evidence numbers uh, as possible. Uh, if you still struggle with uh, some kind of um, doubts, if you still like to ask us some other question, you can do it through um, our um, help desk address in photosecurity at foundingbox.com. You can visit our uh, web page as well and visit the main uh, security web page to learn more about. Uh, the open call. And now uh, this is the time for question. I don't know if we have any. Uh, Anna, if you can help me and uh, read the question out loud, it will be uh, much easier to answer them. Sure, thank you a lot. So we have two questions in the chat so far. The first one, good morning. How can I register our company in the catalog, please? Thank you. Okay, if you would like to register um, now uh, at the moment, this um, catalog uh, of a security solution is um, in form of PDF. And in February, we would like to open uh, the tool uh, that you can register uh, by yourself uh, visiting the web page. Um, if you would like to be added to the catalog, you can send us information and we will, at the moment, and we will uh, forward to the partner who is responsible for managing the catalog. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. Can a young startup apply uh, less than a year? Thank you. Yes, so uh, any company, startup as well, can participate uh, in this um, project. So uh, it's important that you have some kind of um, team that will be able to conduct the project. And of course, you should have uh, a partner that will um, 
support you in the process. At the same time, please remember of fulfilling the requirements like um, results of this um, questionnaire, a financial check. I know that in case of very young companies, the results maybe that appear will not be um, uh, outstanding or maybe you will not be considered as having a very good financial situation, but uh, please describe this, um, this situation and uh, this should be okay for the application stage. Thank you. Um... I see a few more questions. Is an SME from Andorra eligible for this program? The US several agreements with Andorra. Uh, Angora, right? Or Angola? <laughs> and, Andorra. Okay, Andorra. So, Andorra. Yeah. Andorra. No. so you should check the list of, uh, uh, of the countries eligible. So the list is available in the guide for applicants. And I don't know at the moment, I'm not sure. Um, this is uh, this is quite possible that it, it, it's um, it's eligible, but yeah, please uh, go there and check. And the second uh, question was about U.S. Uh, agreement. Uh, the EU has several agreements with Andorra. No, no, Andorra is not eligible. I just checked it. Okay. So sorry. Um, let me move, off, move on to the next question. Uh, regarding scoring, you mentioned that there is a point for SME from different countries. Can you please explain the scoring consortium composition at the geographical, uh, geographical level? 50% weight up to 15 points. Yes, so uh, this is a first scoring criterion. So um, we have a different question there. So the highest score you can receive when SME or consortium members are registered in different countries. You can receive um, less question, but still some if uh, you are registered in the same country, but uh, in different region. And there is no score if you are registered in the same country in the same region there. Thank you. Uh, could you present our idea another time? Would there be another session? Um, there is no another webinar planned so far. So if you would like to show uh, or pitch your project uh, and look for a partner, there are different options, what, what you can do. First, I um, encourage you to register for format making session on 8th of February. So you can describe your project on the platform and try to schedule a meeting with the company that already registered there. Uh, if you failed to uh, find a partner, you can send us your project description and we will uh, try to find uh, partners for you manually. Because the uh, security consortium is composed of a cluster operating security domain. And um, we will try to contact cluster and check if maybe within the network by somebody put, that could form a consortium with you. So these are, these are question and uh, options possible. For you at the moment. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Okay, so last, <laughs> uh, last two seconds uh, to submit a question if you have any, and then we will close the session. All right, thank you so much uh, for your time. If you have any other question, please um, send us directly. Um, you can also uh, uh, check frequently asked question documents, where uh, we included a lot of different uh, questions there. Uh, and thank you for your um, participation in the webinar and uh, wish you a good luck uh, during preparation of your proposal. Thank you so much. <laughs>